I'd like to read from my text this morning from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So I was wondering, do you have a friend that sticks closer than a, a brother or a sister? Do you have a really close friend? Do you have a friend that will never let you down? Have a hundred percent confidence in? Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year? Available immediately, won't tell your secrets, can have 100% trust in, loves you no matter what. Do you have that kind of friend? How about one, that, a friend that can take your sins away, take your guilt away, your condemnation away? Gives you peace and hope. Do you have a friend like that? Well, I only know of one friend that can accomplish all that. His name is Jesus. I met him a long time ago. I heard about him. But he really became my friend on September the 12th, 1976. At the close of an evening service over in Grants Pass, Oregon, I went down to an altar. I don't remember the words I said, but I know what I felt. I surrendered my life to him, and I felt like a heavy load was lifted off my shoulders. He made himself real to me that he heard my prayer, and he became my very best friend. In Luke 7, 34, it tells us that Jesus was a friend of publicans and sinners. And, of course, the Pharisees and the religious folk of Jesus' day didn't like that. But that's what Jesus came here. It says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come to just be to the righteous, but he came to be a friend to those that didn't have a friend, to give hope to those that didn't have any hope. You think about Jesus' life. All he did was, once he started his ministry, all he did was go about doing good. Healed the sick. Raise the dead. Uh, blind eyes open. Lives that were a mess, he changed. Just a few examples. I think of the time when Jesus was there and these men bring this woman to him. It says she was taking adultery in the very act, so she was caught in the act. And the Jewish law said that... Uh, you're supposed to stone these women that are caught in this situation. And so they come to Jesus, not because they had concern for the woman, but they were trying to trip him up. And they say, what do you say, Jesus? What should we do? And I love Jesus' response. He said, he that is without sin among you, you cast the first stone. One by one, they all laugh. Someone had mentioned that maybe they were guilty of the very act themselves and uh, they were condemned. Nevertheless, whatever the case was, here we have Jesus and the woman guilty. Can you, can you imagine what she felt like? Humiliated, publicly humiliated. 
And she probably thought, oh, great, now what? But Jesus said, doth no man condemn thee? Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. See, that's, that's the difference. Uh, we, can, we can maybe forgive someone and say, okay, we don't condemn you anymore. But only Jesus can give us the power to go and sin no more. Only Jesus can change lives. Right. Only Jesus can forgive sins and take out the condemnation, the guilt, and all of that. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Thought of another occasion when Jesus went over to this place and their man came out of the tombs, called him Legion because he had so many devils. And this man's life was a complete disaster. He lived in the tombs. It said he, he would cut himself. And it's just society had written him off and said, there is no hope for this individual. And in the natural, there was no hope. But when Jesus showed up, things changed. Those demons desired to be, to go into some swine that were feeding nearby, and those swine, when they heard that herd of swine, they ran in, off a cliff and drowned in the sea. You know, in John 10.10, 10, it says, the, de the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to give life and life more abundantly. It's a very clear picture of the two Aside, Satan is out to destroy those people's lives, and we see it in front of us in our day. We see it in Jesus' day, but Jesus is still alive and well, and he is offering life and to be a friend to whoever will accept him. Well, when Jesus was done with this man, it says the people from the city came out, and they saw this man that was uh, uh, naked and uh, just a disaster. It says clothed and in his right mind and with Jesus. Amen. Thank the Lord, with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. The people, we look at it, we look at some of their lives, and it's like, how is there any possibility they could ever be reached? But thank God, there's still hope in Jesus. We're not of any help, but thankful that Jesus can. It's our job to keep praying for him. Keep being a light when we have the opportunity. In Mark, the 10th chapter, Jesus told, the account is told of a rich young ruler. They came to Jesus and he asked him, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And this is verse 18 of Mark 10. And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Yeah. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, master, all things have I observed from my youth. And look at Jesus' response. It says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. For God so loved the world, and Jesus, uh, the Son of God, he loved individuals. He loved publicans and sinners. He loved those that had no hope. He loves you and he loves me. Jesus looked on this rich young ruler, and he loved him. It's like, you know what? I have the answer for you. You ask, what must I do to inherit eternal life? I have the answer. You've done a lot of good things. I have the answer. 
One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at the saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. It's sad. But Jesus loved him. And at any point, if that man would have turned and said, okay, you're more important than all the possessions I have, Jesus would have saved him and became his friend. In our scripture reading in John 15, verse 13, it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. It's very commendable when a somebody will give their life for another individual. And we're thankful in our country, all the men and women that gave their lives so that we have the freedom which is under fire today. But we're thankful for all those before us that gave their lives for what we have. It's commendable when someone will lay down their life for somebody else. But Jesus, he didn't just lay down his life for those that were good. He laid down his life for everyone ever born. From Adam and Eve to the very last baby born, Jesus laid down his life. Because if Jesus would not have given that supreme sacrifice, there would have been no hope for humanity because God in his love and, and mercy says that Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. He knew when he created Adam and Eve, he had to give them a, a free will. And they exercised that free will and unfortunately disobeyed God and plunged all humanity into sin. But God had a plan. God's love reached clear out to us in 2022. Almost around 2,000 years later, Jesus, a blood that he shed on Calvary, is still flowing to save that one that had just surrendered to him. Just say, I'm sorry. We're thankful that God, when he came up with this plan, didn't make it complicated. Except, Jesus said, except you become as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Just a simple, honest prayer. All it takes, a time when Jesus told about the, the Pharisee and the public, publican that went to the temple to pray, the publican knew he was a sinner. The Pharisee was a religious man. People of society probably looked up to him, thought he was a great guy. He proceeded to pray to God and tell God all the great things that he did. There were good things. I'm not saying they're not. The publican, he couldn't even lift his eyes up to heaven. He just smote on his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. A simple, honest prayer. I think of Brother Ollie Talley's testimony. I heard it so many times and it thrilled me every time and had the privilege to go to many mission meetings with him. And he'd tell how he was uh, 40, nearly 49 years of age, somewhere in there, and that he didn't know anything about the gospel. He saw Jesus saves painted on rocks in Southern California, and he didn't know what Jesus could save a person from. But he came to a, a church service, and the preacher preached and said, come, uh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. At the close of that service, he went down to the altar and he said, God, forgive me if I'm a sinner. He didn't even know. And he says, what God showed me I couldn't stand to look at. 
tears gushed out of my eyes and he said, oh God, forgive me, it'll never happen again. And in his testimony, he would say, I'm thankful the Lord has saved me for so many years and so many months. That's the only person I ever remember telling how many years and how many months, but Brother Ollie, that was his testimony. But just think that, just to honest it, that age, God heard his prayer many years. We heard his wonderful testimony. Verse 14 says, Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. You know what? The commandments that we have in God's word, they're not difficult, they're not grievous, they're not burdensome. They're for our good. Every single command that God has is for our benefit. He's our creator. He knows us better than anyone else. It says he knows what things we have need of before we even ask him. And he just says, I want to be your friend. But you're really my friend when you do what I command you. You know, I'm thankful that all these years, since I asked the Lord to come into my life and he became my friend, I can say that it has not been difficult doing what he commands. I'm thankful that he has been amazing, more than amazing, more than wonderful. Words cannot describe how he helps me, how he has helped me, how he continues to help me day by day. You look at the world and, and the chaos and all the things that are going on, and it's like my little piddly needs. Why would God even care about my little needs? And yet he cares about my little needs. Things that really don't matter. Yet he shows himself real to me uh, daily, just little things. And I'm sure he does to you too. Jesus is amazing. What a friend. Hebrews 13, 5, 6 and 8. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, Jesus, the same one that healed the sick, raised the dead, uh, helped that woman that was taken in adultery, helped that man that had the devils. He's the same today. He can do the same today. 1 Peter 5, 7, a, a verse you hear me quote often. It's a little short verse, but casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Yeah. Aren't you thankful that God cares, Jesus cares? Yeah. I know I'm hitting some of these familiar verses. These are some of my favorites. It's hard to pick out just a few because there's so many good ones. But we can't leave Isaiah 40 and 41 out. 40, verse 28, starting at verse 28. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 41, 10 and verse 13, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I don't know about you, but thinking about the Creator, our Savior, I am with thee you that that's that's special that is very assuring in these days i don't know about you but i need help 
And I'm thankful that we can whisper a prayer and say, God, I need your help, and he's there. And he says, fear not, I will help you. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. A little quote out of a, a devotional says, Jesus is a friend that knows all our faults and still loves us anyway. In closing, I'd like to read the verses of what a friend we have in Jesus. How many years have we sung this song? But, you know, I was looking at this and it's like, how can I leave a verse out? So bear with me as I read these verses real quick here. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything. Not just some, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Do you have Jesus as your best friend? He wants to be. You know, it says, I believe it's in Revelation, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. You know, Jesus doesn't force himself on anyone. But oh, when you open that door, what you get is beyond words. I can tell you, from experience, Jesus is the best friend I've ever had. As we close this service, may we come before him, thank him for what he's done, for what he's doing. And those cares, those concerns, those worries, whatever they are, may we cast them on him. May we not leave his house burdened with the cares of life, but may we leave him here. Say, Jesus, you've got this. He'll give us that peace. May God bless you. The closing song, 630. Looks like it might be what a friend we have in Jesus. Let's sing this, and then we'll have a time of prayer. <laughs>